public exposure and we are continuing on with our investigation of the mortgage foreclosure crisis. We are very fortunate to have Howard Bono of the, the Financial Revival Group. The website, by the way, is myfinancialrevival.com. There's also my personal bailout? My own bailout. My own bailout.com. Right. I strongly encourage you to go to that. Very interesting things. Um, also, what you should do is to go to the website because there is, uh, does the thought of your home in foreclosure keep you up at night? Well, there's a lot of people that it does. You were saying one in four? One in four. That, this is in the Western Washington area. In other areas around the country, Western Washington is a little bit higher. Than, than other areas. Actually, the last mm. statistic that came out of Western Washington was one in three. Um, but nationwide, it's about one in four wow. that are upside down. Okay, we're talking about foreclosure, and this time it's damage to your credit if you decide to walk away. Let's mm -hmm. go back to our example again. Mark and Sarah, their 2011 house value is $185,000. They owed $277,000 on it. Uh, they now have, because of a reduction in income, are making under $50,000 a year, and basically they can't make it. Right. Um, foreclosure and damage to credit. We're going to put a graphic up, but just what does it do to you? It certainly does damage your credit. There's no way around it. There's no magic pill to, to make that not happen. Your credit is going to be damaged. There's a couple of things that we think are happening, though. Um, the banks have taken about 4 million homes in foreclosure so far. We think that by the time that this whole foreclosure crisis is over, that they're going to take somewhere between 15 and 20 million homes in foreclosure. As much as five times the amount we of think what they're that We done. think that we're not close to even being to the middle of this at this point. So we think that they're going to take, let's say they take 15 million homes. Now, this is my own personal idea here, but um, the banks aren't really very good at dealing with money because they had to get huge bailouts from the government just we, to survive. We did notice that, yes. Now the banks are going to take on 15 million homes. And so the are the banks going to go back and, and say basically, because you had a house foreclosed, we are not going to sell you one of these houses that we desperately need to sell you? Or are the banks going to change the rules, as they're known to do when it benefits their, their bottom line, and say, you know something, why don't we just forget that whole foreclosure thing, because it kind of hit everybody? And if you want to buy one of these houses that now cost half of what they used to cost, we'd love to sell you one. We have to sell you one. We think absolutely that the credit scoring system going forward is either going to have to be completely scrapped or it's going to have to be changed dramatically. So yes, in the situation that you're in, if you've had a foreclosure, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac says we are not going to let you buy another house for between four and seven years. So the thought process we have there is, number one, do we really think Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are going to be here in four <laughs> years? And secondly, will the banks change the rules going forward so that they can get rid of this massive amount of houses that they're going to have? They're already lying about the number of houses that they have. Well, and they are absolutely lying about this that. This is an interesting thing that, that you're talking about, that because right on, on the website, myfinancialrevival.com, you make this statement about credit scores. Anytime the banks and the credit companies want to achieve a different result, they change the algorithm or the formula that spits out your number. Is that true? Yes. Let me give you some examples. Um, it used to be if you had credit card debt, if you, had, if you owed less than 50% of your limit on your credit card, if you owed less than 50% of that, it didn't negatively affect your credit score. A couple of years ago, they changed that algorithm to where if you owed less than 30%, it didn't change your score. So if you had a $10,000 limit on your credit card mm -hmm. and you owed $4,000 on that credit card, a few years ago, it didn't negatively impact your credit score. Today, it does. Really? Yes. They changed the ruling as they were tightening credit. Now, this just happened a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. Can you find anything definitive to verify that? No because they're very secretive about that entire algorithm and, and the way that, that they manipulate it. They so how do you know? Because I have just some, I have a lot of friends in the business. <laughs> I have some insider information and I was in the mortgage business for 20 years. So really I've th seen thousands of credit reports. Mm -hmm. And so we can start to determine uh, what's being changed in these. Now we're seeing that for people that have had a foreclosure, we're seeing the damage to your credit actually not nearly as severe as it was a few years ago. 
And I can give you an example of that. I have a friend who gave a house back in a foreclosure. Now, this is somebody that is, has a lot of money in the bank. This was a purely business decision on a second home that they owned in San Diego. Uh, gave their house back. The bank took it in January of 2010. In January of 2011, this year, she called me and said, I just ran my credit scores, and my middle credit score is back up to 719. And I said, wow, how did you do that? And she said, I'm calling you to see if you know how. And I said, they've changed that algorithm so it doesn't impact your credit scores quite nearly so much. So we're seeing some of those things mm -hmm. already happening. What I would tell people, what we tell our members, for example, and the people that we coach, is that if you're going to give your house back, if you're going to make that independent decision to do that and give your house back, you're going to rent for a couple of years. The bottom of the housing market, we think, is 2014 or 2015, so you're not going to want to buy a house until then anyway. And by then, we absolutely believe that your credit score is either not going to matter or will have adjusted enough and healed enough so that you're going to be able to buy whatever you want to buy. So if I ask the question, uh, you know, can Mark and Sarah ever buy a house again? The answer is absolutely yes. Absolutely, if they choose to. What we really want people to understand is just because we've gone through this situation with real estate, um, owning a house, I still believe, is a great thing. Um, from an economic standpoint, is it a great thing now? No. Will it be again in the future? I, I absolutely believe that. So I want people to not be so damaged from this situation that they never want to own a house again because I don't think that's really healthy. Okay, good points. Right here on Public Exposure, we are investigating the foreclosure crisis and we'll be back with more 